Amen. Amen. I love that song. It says, your promises, still, his promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. No expiration date on God's promises. Isn't it? Praise the Lord. That's good. That's good. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. You just worked on my title for tonight. Praise the Lord. That's what we do around here. We lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. We give him praise. We give him glory. So tonight, we're just grateful that you are here. I, I, I just wanted to touch on that subject because that's what we do. We love to do that. I mean, we've uh, uh, talked uh, some time back of how you enter uh, into the presence of the Lord with your praise. As praise is your, your key in, right? And, and there's some several steps. But tonight, let me just get to this subject called praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I want you to go with me in your Bibles in the book of Psalms, the book of Psalms, the book of Psalms, and we want to look at Psalm 150. Wow, verse 1 starts out and it says, praise the Lord. Say that with me again, praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Where's God's sanctuary? Right here, you are the sanctuary. Amen. Some are temples, some are sanctuaries like me. If you're a little bigger, you get. <laughs> Amen. Praise him, what? In his mighty firmament. Amen. And in and, and verse number two, we just keep going here. Praise him for his mighty acts. I mean, you keep reading and you're going to keep on seeing the Bible talks about praise him. Praise him. And after a while, you're going to get the message. He, he, he wants to be praised. Can, can you see that? God loves to be praised. Amen. And there's blessing, there's reward in praising God. It's not like you do it for naught. No, he, he's organized a blessing attached to it. Now, even if there was no blessing, he's still worthy of our praises. Come on, if, he is still worthy because of who he is. So we get to worship and we get to praise him. C praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Continue on. All the way to, to number six as we continue on. He says, praise him with the sound of the what? Oh, now we won't mess up some folks because now you're talking about instruments playing in the house. God loves trumpets. Praise him with the lute and the harp. Oh my goodness. Continue, praise him with a timbrel and dance. You mean you all dance in the house? Yes, because he commands it. He says, praise him like that. God loves you to dance before him. Well, I don't have no rhythm. He didn't say anything about just dance. If you can move your body, they have a song like that. Move your body, amen. David said, everything within me, all that is within me, praise the Lord, right? Praise him with the stringed instruments and flutes. Praise him with the loud cymbals. Woo, glory, we got those. Praise him with the crashing cymbals. Amen. Let everything, say this with me. Let everything that has breath, what? Come on, you can't be quiet tonight. Let everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Everything, you've got breath. You want, I don't know, you, you may want to want to touch, pinch, uh, uh, look at your neighbor, check for breath. If they've got it, they have a right to praise the Lord. Amen. Are you checking? Because you never know, you know. Hallelujah. You always make sure. And they're still breathing. And as long as you have breath in you, you're supposed to praise the Lord. David says, when I'm in the grave, I can't praise you. So it's best you keep me up here alive where I can praise you. Now, if you're not a praiser, you know, you, 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 you don't, I don't know. Uh, I'm just reading what David's saying. He says, if I'm in the grave, I can't praise you. So if you're not a praiser, you may want to go early. I don't know. I, I just want to stay here and praise him. Y'all pick that up later. Amen. I'm just going to give some scripture tonight. Let, let's back up to 149. I mean, just in that neighborhood, 149 says this. He says, let the saints be joyful. 
right? Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing softly. Everything with God is like, woo, extreme. Extreme praise. Let them sing aloud in their beds. I mean, even while you're in bed, you got to praise them, sing aloud. Amen. Amen. Let the high praises of God be in your mouth. Let the high praises of God be in your mouth. And a two-edged sword in their hand. My goodness. Hallelujah. Love this, don't you do? Love that. Uh, I, I want you also to look with me over here in, 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 uh, in 2 Samuel. Is it okay if we just look at scripture tonight? Yes. 2 Samuel. Note, note what the, the psalmist says here. In verse number 1, we'll just pick it up there, chapter 22. Then David spoke to the Lord the words of the song. How do you speak to the Lord's the word of the song? I guess he was reciting it, but, but I believe he was singing it to the Lord. It was on the day that the Lord had delivered him from the hand of all his enemies. He, he, he couldn't help himself. And he began to say this, and he began to sing this to the Lord, and, and uh, saved him from his enemies from the hand of Saul. And this is what he said, The Lord is my rock! And my fortress and my deliverer. Whoa, I can just hear him. He just, he just got delivered from the hand of his enemies. Just got freedom, just got a breakthrough. And, and others would want to go, you know, on a cruise. No, he just decided to praise the Lord. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. And verse three, and he says, the God of my what? Of my strength. I want us to get into this thing tonight that, that we as a people of God, there's really benefit in praising God. These people that I'm talking about, you watch their lives. It's because they praised. It's because they were a worshiper is when things happened in their lives for them. Amen. And friend, God always leaves you with that choice. He'll never make you do anything. But if you don't, Deuteronomy said, because you do not serve the Lord with gladness. There's consequences for that. He'll hand you over to his enemies. Read the scripture. He says, in whom I will trust my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold, my refuge, my savior. You save me from violence. Oh, verse number four. Can we go there? I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. Watch this. Underline this with big red letters. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Woo. When the waves of death surround me, the floods of ungodliness made me afraid. Now he's going to continue on, but I want you to underline where he says, I'm going to praise the Lord. I'm going to, he's going to deliver me uh, from all my enemies. Because I worship him, I'm a praiser. Amen. He says, when the floods of the ungodly come against me, make me afraid. Listen, just keep on going. And he continues on. And he says in verse 6, and the sorrow of Sheol or hell surround me. How many has ever had that kind of feeling? That surround you, come upon you. And the snare of death confront me. Wow. In my distress. Anybody's ever been distressed? Amen. Did you notice in your distress, when you're depressed, distressed, oppressed, all of the above, that's, the, that's when most people, 99% of the time, refuse to praise the Lord in their distress. Come on. Come on. It's like they're dis too distressed to raise their hand and bless the Lord. Well, well, what do you expect me to praise God when I'm going through what I'm going through? You don't understand. This man just told you he faced death head on. He was in distress. He was stuff surrounded him. And he says, in my distress, I called upon the Lord. I cried out to my God. He heard my voice from his temple from heaven. There's some lessons to be learned here. Oh my. And my cry was not in vain. My cry entered his ears. He heard me. 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 Mama, when your baby cry, how many still got babies? Yeah, 21 year old babies. So I mean. <laughs> When they were little and they cried, come on. 
you respond, don't you? Yes. Often, you know, and there's a, there's a certain cry. You identify, you know when it's a serious cry, right? You, you, you kind of can tell that, you guys. Right. When it's an annoying cry, he's just being, you know, sleepy. You don't pay as much attention to that, you know, and it, it, you kind of help him out. But there's a certain cry. It'll move you. It moves you. I remember, I may have shared this here, but I remember when Chantel was just very young and um, uh, uh, we had, uh, where we lived in White House back in the day, uh, they had, you know, our neighbors had these uh, demon-possessed dogs. I firmly believe they were. <laughs> they chased, barked killed whatever they could find. I mean, these were, these were terrorist little things. And uh, we knew that. They actually came one night. We had a little fluffy cat that she loved. And the cat kind of got out. And these dogs got a hold of the cat. They killed the cat. And she was terrified. She was heartbroken. And she was terrified of these dogs anyway, okay? And one day she was playing in the yard and just running and playing. And all of a sudden, the dogs came charging out of their gate. The gate was open, three, four of them just charging out. She thought it was coming for her. I mean, it was just, yeah. And I was sitting in the living room. I don't know what we were doing, but I heard this kind of a cry that, that you know, somebody, your, your, your baby's in trouble. I tell you, I leaped. I didn't even walk around the couch. I leaped right over the thing. If there was a door in my way, I would have knocked the door down. I promise you that. I was going to find who is hurting my baby, yes. right? My little daughter. And I ran out. And on my way out, there was a, a like a shovel or something. And on my way, just happened to yank the shovel and I'm, I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever, whatever is out there, I'm going to protect my child. Come on, somebody. Because I heard the, the, the certain way of, of crying out. Daddy! Daddy! I moved. I, I would move heaven and earth. And when I ran out there, I saw the dogs, but I could see from my advantage point that they were not coming to her. They were ch chasing another dog. But she didn't know that. And so when I ran to her, I just remember throwing the shovel down and I scooped her up in my arms and just, just held her. I said, it's okay. It's okay, Daddy. Is I got you. I got you. I've got you. And it took her a while to get her composure. You know what I mean. Come on, guys. When you cry out in your distress, don't you know your heavenly father hears you? I mean, if our earthly fathers and mothers and, and caregivers and grandparents are like that, they'll move mountains for you. How much more? Our heavenly father. Amen. He said, my cry <laughs> entered. I don't know how he heard, but oh, how he knew. I guess I know how he knew because God came and delivered him. He answered him. Amen. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and, he, and, and cried out to God. And he heard my voice from this temple. And my cry entered. I, I, you know, when I read this like that and I just begin to meditate, it moves me to know that if I will do that for my children, how much more my heavenly father? Can I get a good amen? Amen. amen. I, I just wanted to bring some of that to you right now. Um, if we could, can I go back to the last portion of scripture there in verse 49, 5 uh, and 6, the latter part really there, if we could. I, I wanted you to see something. He says... Um, let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud in their beds. Number six uh, says, uh, let the high, well, it, it no, where, where was I? Oh, I went to, to number five, uh, six, and seven. Can I go to number four, chapter number four? Because I highlighted that for me uh, uh, in um, uh, 49. Is, is, is four in there uh, still? I think it's in there. You have to have four if you're going to have six, right? You're going to start with one, I guess. I don't know. What do I know? It's just uh, 49, uh, 5, 6. Um, but if, if we'll go to uh, uh, 2 Samuel 22, verse 4. That's the one I wanted, actually. 2 Samuel, back to, uh, uh, to that one. Because I wanted you to see, he says, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. Watch that. 
He's talking about the distress. He's talking about trouble. He's talking about all these things. And he says, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved. See, to me, that just means something there. It's not by accident he put it in there. He lists all the stuff that he's going through, but he says, I will call upon the Lord who is, by the way, worthy to be praised. And because I do that, so shall I be saved from my enemies. Hey, that, thing, that thing grabs a hold of me, man. Oh, Now, I just want to bring some areas to you, if, if you will. If you continue on for homework tonight, I don't want us to go in there because there's lots of scripture. My time is short. I want us to get to praising God and watch God break the shackles off of our lives. Be begin to pour miracles into our hearts and our lives. Amen. So, but if you read the entire portion all the way from uh, where we were at verse uh, 5 and 6 and 7, then you pick up 8. I mean, you haven't seen nothing yet because 8... You know, seven is saying he's calling on the Lord and all of this. And he heard my cry. And then verse eight talks about where he gets up off of his throne and God is angry. Can I just read one or two things to you? It says, uh, he says, the earth shook and trembled and the foundations quaked and was shaken. Smoke went out from his nostrils dev and devouring fire out of his mouth. Coals were kindled by it. He came down. This is... You read it knowing that when David cried out, the Lord heard his cry. Here's the results. God stands up from his throne and is ready to come down and rescue you. He came down with darkness under his feet. He rode upon cherubs and he flew. There was under his wings, uh, wings of wind. He said he sent out his arrows and scattered them. What? It's the enemy. Lightning bolts and he defeated them. I tell you when you praise the Lord. There's something supernatural that takes place in the heavenlies. You say but I can't see it. Believe it. It's in the word. Oh my goodness. When the child of God cries out. And prays and calls. I mean when you're serious about it. In his distress, I read that I nearly flipped my chair over. That to think that God would leap into action in this fashion, read it. I mean, if I was the devil, I'd just go and commit suicide. It's just like, <laughs> you don't want to face an angry God, I'm just going to tell you. Oh, and people think they just play games with God. He said he sent out his arrows, scattered them, lightning bolts, defeated them. <laughs> he said, he drew me out of many waters, delivered me from my enemy, from my strong enemy. I don't care how strong the enemy looks, God can deliver you from it. But there is, a, there is something that precedes all the lightning bolts and all the delivery. It's the praise that must precede it. I'm just grabbing a hold of this thing. Well, I'm just not emotional. You better get a get emotional. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hmm. It says, these people, they confronted me in, in the day of my calamity. I mean, the man is in serious trouble, right? But he says, but the Lord was my support. <laughs> That's why it's a dangerous thing to mess with the child of God. Don't, don't listen. Go, go fight other people. Don't fight God's people. Because now you're messing. You, you, you're pricking his eye. The apple of his. Don't mess with God's people. And that's the reason why when, when you disagree with preachers or whatever they are, just keep your mouth shut. Pray about it. Talk to God about it. Don't you go out and gossip and point fingers at people and, you know, you're just so free and bold. No, no, no. You're messing with God's people now. And you're sitting be beside one of them right now. Just look, look, but be careful. Be careful how you look because you, 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 they're God's creation. They're God's people. He said, the Lord was my support. He brought me out. <laughs> 
into a broad place. Delivered me. Oh, and I love what it says here. I just had to write some of that down. Listen, where is my scripture reading? And uh, if you go, uh, 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 what, how does that verse end? I ran out of paper. That's why I couldn't write it. My goodness. What does it say at the end there? Who do what? Thank you. I knew there was a cool nugget there. He did all that not only because I praised him and he already likes me, but he did all that because, say it again, he delighted in me. Now, why did God love David that much? I mean, what was it about him? He was a man after the heart of God. What made him do? It was because he was a worshiper. He was not afraid to praise God. When, when he was in obscurity, when nobody could see him. You see, there's, only, there's people that can only show out in front of other people. Whoa, glory. But how are you at home? How are you on the job? How are you? Are you still walking this walk? Are you still excited about God when you're in front of other people and other, when you know, family come over. Oh, I can't, you gotta be quiet. Show out. God takes record. He keeps notes of everything. That in the day of your dilemma and your stress, he said, that's a worshiper. That's one that's not afraid or ashamed of me. And I shall not be ashamed of them. I'm going to deliver him. Because I delight in that person. Touch two people, tell them, God delights in me. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, eat it up. God delights in me. That feel good to know that? God delights in me. He really does. Well, no, I, I don't see how he can because, you know, with all my mistakes and how, how I am and moody blues and, and all this kind of, He knows your frame. Right? You love your kids in, even when they're naughty, don't you? Right? Even when they need a spanking, you still love them. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. God loves you. God loves you. He loves you. He delights in you. He delights in you. <laughs> I looked at that word. Hallelujah. 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 Do we even understand how powerful that word is? We say that, you know, and we don't even hardly think of it anymore. Hallelujah. Uh, or Alleluia. It's the same thing. Hallelujah. Hallel. Uh, can I give you some Hebrew to give us a little bit deeper foundation? Amen. The Hebrew meaning for hallelujah is simply praise he, Yah. Yah or Yahweh. That's the name of God. Yah. Y-A-H, Yah. Praise Yah, the creator God. The creator of heaven and earth. So he's worthy of our praise. Amen. The, another meaning is to shine. To, to, uh, to declare uh, uh, and boast in him or rave. Right? They rave at, at the football games over their fans and, and the predators. And I think they just won and they, everybody wanted you to be a predator. Right? Is that the, the hockey dudes? It's really a fight and a hockey game broke out. <laughs> you, went, you go to a boxing match or a slugging out match and then sometimes they play hockey. <laughs> Love you guys. <laughs> Glad you won, man. And you watch people celebrate when they make that little goal with the puck. You watch them rave, you watch them boast, you watch them wear the t-shirts. They, I mean, every, it's all over the place. God is worthy of that kind of praise and more. God is worthy of you bragging on the job. I mean, how many, did you notice people not afraid or ashamed to brag on the job when their team has won? They'll tell everybody. <laughs> they don't care. Woo, my 
team with wine and you know how they'll paint their faces they'll they'll get the popcorn they, I mean they dress up they'll decorate the house they'll uh, hang stuff outside and on their on their doors and when come on be guilty now y'all wave your hand you've done it <laughs> right we take the paint and we go whoever they are you know when I was in uh, 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 with uh, Andrew, there he is. Wave your hand, Andrew. He played. He played. I can't believe my son played for the Blue Devils. <laughs> Football. Uh, he was tough. My God, he's still tough. But I still can beat him. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> But uh, we got us a football guy in the, in the house. But I remember sitting uh, 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 the first times. I don't know if you remember that. But Elise and I would go watch him play. I didn't understand much of the game because they keep on stopping the game. And, and I'm, I'm thinking rugby. Just run. Let's go, man. But I got to understand a little bit and I enjoyed it. But here's my dilemma. I could never do what the cheerleaders wanted me to do. They kept yelling, go devils, go. I could not sing, go devils, go. I screamed when everybody, the whole stadium yelled, go devils or devils. I'm going, angels, go. And had people look at me like, oh, you know, who, are, who is this guy anyway? I couldn't cheer for a devil. I just, just had a hard time. I'm sorry. <laughs> but they became, they, you guys that year, you guys were... Uh, state champions uh, in that region there but that's cool that's cool I think because he was on the team <laughs> amen uh, let me back up can I tell you well, hold on I took him to the first time to school at least and I had him going to go register him he's, he's like what are you five years old just turned five five and a half we're going to take him to, to school and, and as I walked in and I'm looking up, oh my, oh. <laughs> and so I just had a, a problem with it. So, and, and um, Elise said, now, you know, behave yourself. <laughs> I tried. So we walked in there and, and, and uh, I said uh, to one of the uh, uh, teachers, I said, uh, where's the principal's office? Oh, he's over there. And I think he's got somebody. Tell, I said, tell him, uh, uh, Pastor McGregor. I was not a pastor. I said, tell him uh, Mr. McGregor wants to see him. Uh, Mr. Woodall. I met him. They, they named the school after him. He's no longer here, but uh, an older gentleman. So they finally let me in, and we walked in, and I greeted him, and I was green as anything. I just said, Mr. Woodall, good to meet you. Are you a Christian? He said, yes, 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 yes. Uh, I said, I am too. I'm actually a preacher, evangelist. I said, uh, I'm registering Andrew, my son. We're here, you know. We just, uh, we brand new. I said, did you realize you have a devil painted across your, <laughs> across your thing? He was confused. I mean, what? I said, yeah, you have a devil on top of your wall up here. Uh, he, uh, he didn't know what to say. And, and you know, I just... Uh, I said, you know, uh, that's our enemy. If we're Christians, I, you know, that's who we rebuke. That's who we, you know. <laughs> he said, oh, no, 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 no. You don't understand. That's just the, the mascot for our father. I said, why you have that for a mascot? <laughs> I got in trouble and he got in trouble. And anyway, at least I guess you, you graduated from that school. So they must not have hated you too much, Andrew. <laughs> he made it through, even though they were called that. But it's just amazing, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the creator, God. Amen. Shine, boast, celebrate. Be clamorously foolish. That's a big word. That, that's what that word actually means in your, in your Hebrew. Be, be foolish about it. Don't be dignified at all when it comes to praising God is what I'm reading. See, we get nervous. Oh, my, now, wait a minute now. We just, you know. I, I know, my goodness. But uh, I want to get to, to the part where he breaks down some of the words. And, and, and yeah, let's, let's first go there. I'll come back to Psalm 100 if you'll hold that one for me. Because I call that Psalm 100%. That's just 100% praise right there. You can get ready for that one. But one of the words that I want to break down concerning praise and worship unto God, especially the word praise or hallelujah, if you break it down even further. The first word I want to give you, I don't know if we, hopefully we got on the board, is shabak. 
Shabbat. Can you say that? Shabbat. Not Shabbat. The worship is the other one, Shabbat. C-H, right? It means to shout. Because if you read Psalm 100, the first verse, second verse, says shout unto the Lord. So that's the word in the Hebrew that they would use when they express or if they would teach the people how to praise God, this word comes up. Shabbat God or Yahweh, right? To shout. Somebody say shout. shout. You can't whisper that word, by the way. It is to address in a loud tone. That's what that means. It is to command praise. It's a word also meaning triumph, right? Shabbat. Second one is Barak. Barak, to bow down. How many know he's asking us to bow down in his presence? It's a sign of reverence, of honor. They do this in the, in the uh, Eastern culture to one another. That's part of their greeting. And they honor whoever it's a guest in the home or however they do. But that's where that word comes from. It means to bow yourself. Have you ever watched videos or footage or you've been to the Wailing Wall, how the Jewish folks still do that today when they pray and they honor God? They have a habit of praying like this. Have you watched them? They're bowing. They're bowing. They'll stand there for hours, won't they? And they pray and they worship with their whole body, their body movement honors God. Barak, Barak is to bow or to kneel as an act of adoration. When you bow in his presence, how many know that immediately brings humility, it humbles you. You humble yourself. And that's what the word of God says, when you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, he will exalt you. There'll be a day when somebody says, well, I'll never do that. Oh, every knee shall bow. There's coming a day every knee shall bow. Every tongue must and shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Oh, it's going to happen. Why not do it now with a willing heart? Then wait to be forced and you must. Oh, my friend, come on. Barak, bow, kneel down as an act of worship. An act of adoration. Amen. Third word is toda. 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 Come on, my Hebrew friends. Am I pronouncing this thing correctly? Toda. toda. Right? Were well, you in the south? How, you, how will you say it here in the south with a little? <laughs> toda, y'all. <laughs> Extension of the hand. Or hands. As in receiving, watch this, or, or uh, let, me, let me read the whole uh, portion of that. The extension of the hand in adoration or even accepting uh, for the things received or yet to receive. It is a worship and expression of faith that God, I just worship you and I'm, I'm receiving out of your hand. Uh, whether I'm receiving it now or will receive, it's the same thing to me. You're going to bless me and I'll receive gladly. And I extend my hand to you in worship. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. The next one is Zamar. Come on, help me with the Hebrew pronunciation. Zamar. Right? To make music. To be joyful on musical instruments. I love my brothers and sisters, but friend, you, 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 you break in. How shall I put this beautifully and nicely? When you, when you forbid people to worship God in this fashion, I mean, you, you come in and, and holding back all that he deserves. If the mountains know how to bow down, if the trees know how to clap their hands, if the clouds, the waves roar at his majesty and he's created you and I for his pleasure. Come on, saints. Man didn't come up with this, okay? This is what God introduced and said, this is how I want to be praised. 
just want to help somebody. And I thank God people are coming around. It's just to make music or to pluck the strings of an instrument. That's what you do when you play a guitar. You're plucking the strings of an instrument. So it's scriptural. Amen. Joyful expression of musical instruments. And then you have uh, uh, tehila. That's a pretty word. It sounds a little Spanish in there. Tehila. Tehila. I didn't say tequila. Quick, quick, get, get, please. Y'all get your minds on the Lord. <laughs> tequila. Sing with the Spirit. Sing unto the Lord. Amen. With all that's in you, with your whole man, with your whole spirit. It's more than just in the natural. This is so much deeper in your praise and your worship. It has depth, it has meaning. When you come before the Lord like this, there is no way. He, he can't ignore your praise because it's from the heart. You worship God is what Jesus said. There's coming a day that you won't worship on this mountain or that. You're going to, the Father is looking for those that will worship him. How? In spirit and in truth. That's what God desires. And here's how you can do that. When you sing out his praises in spirit with your whole being. Amen. Oh, that's beautiful, isn't it? I love that. I love that. Oh, I, I wish. Can, can, I, can we get our guys to come quick? Because I want us to spend time in praise. I, it's one thing to teach about it, but I want us to go into action and practice. Amen. I'm a practical guy. Get me over there. Get me reading and studying, but then I want to go exercise. If you tell me God is able to do anything, great. I can't wait to go try it out. To go walk on the water. To go walk in faith. Go find somebody to pray for. Go find somebody to witness to. Come on somebody. This not only works in theory. But it will work out here in the workplace. This is just not a good book. That you read and it's so beautiful. And you pack it away. It's a living book. It's Everything in it is alive. Amen. Now watch this. If you want to write this down, you can do so. But listen, praise, have I found out and many others, will open the door to the supernatural. Praise, there's not much, many other things that will do that for you. Now faith connected with your praise will push the doors open to the miraculous. I strongly suggest become a praiser. Become a worshiper. Tell your body, body line up. Well, I don't want to. Who's going to be stronger, your flesh or your spirit man? Your spirit man is renewed. Your spirit man is born again. Let your body get with the program. Amen. Talk to that body that's lazy, that has a habit of just doing its own thing. Tell that body, I will. didn't Paul say, I buffet my body and I bring it into subjection. Many of us just let the body do whatever the body wants to do. Really, get a backbone in the spirit. The flesh will tell you all kind of stuff. It's the flesh that gets us in trouble. It's the flesh that tells you to rob the store, to tell the lie, to hurt people, to do this and that. Because it wants to gratify itself. But the spirit of God on the inside. Feed the spirit man. And you're going to win in life. Let the real you, who is now alive and born again by the Spirit of God, come forth. Amen. Say this with me. Praise opens the door to the supernatural. Friends, you got to chisel that out somewhere. You, you, I mean, this, don't write it with a pencil. You got, it's for life. You'll praise. Learn how to praise. Learn how to praise. If, I, if, if you walk away with nothing else... And you can't remember anything. Just remember this one. Learn how to praise God. I mean, this is, well, if I don't do it and I really feel it, is it? You st listen, start where you are. Start where you are. Shut the door of your house. Get, get away from people if you, you know, you want to try this out. You got to work it in. Get in the shower. Get, it, get alone in the bathroom. You know how. And, and just, sh and be practice there. And you say words like, Father, I, Jesus, I love you. Maybe you've never said that out loud. You're like, Ooh, I said that? Yeah, say it again. Jesus, I love you. 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 And, and when you feel the, 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 the attack of the enemy trying to say, well, you can't do that. Just do a hundred times more. 
Just if he's going to try to stop you, just exaggerate the whole thing. It'll teach him. Don't mess with that guy. He's going to do double. Don't stand. Then I dare you to stand and stand for an hour just to prove and show the devil. You're messing with the wrong guy. No more Mr. Nice Guy. <laughs> I'm serious about praising God. I'm serious about worship. I'm serious about this thing. This, you got to take this seriously. I mean, because there's great benefits. Amen. Can you get that today? I'm going to give you seven things. Number one, praise will open the door to the supernatural. Number two, praisers. People who praise. They put their trust in God. Non-praisers live by fear and defeat. They're always in fear and defeat. But praisers, it'll, it'll, it'll cause strength in your life. It'll cause a boldness to come forth in your life. It'll cause, I'm in fearlessness when you praise God. Did you ever know a time when David was in fear? He was just a scary never. He'd take on lions and bears and praise. will put strength in your bones. Amen. Number three, praises get their prayers answered quicker than the non-praiser. Yeah. I don't know why I don't get my prayers. Check your praise level. Is your praise tank full? Number four, praises live under the umbrella of God's blessing and favor. Just telling, just saying. Praises live under the umbrella of God's favor and his blessings. If that's not true, then this book, throw it away. Because everywhere I see people who dare to praise God, God came through for them. I mean, really, did you just read what we read? I mean, just really, when David was in distress, he, he called, he praised, he worshiped. And it says, and the Lord showed up. I mean, not just, oh, what do you want? I mean, he moved, the heavens shook. Lightning bolts flashing, enemies scattering. Woo! And he delivered me because he likes me. Hallelujah. Does that make sense? Are you guys ready for action? You ready to praise the Lord? Is there any strings in that thing? Is there anything in that machine? You know, I know we don't have the 15 orchestra or 120 of them, but they put them all in that thing right there. We got the, we got the symbols. Give me some symbols up here. Some, some symbols. Oh, yeah, okay. Pretty. Give me some crashing symbols. Yeah, 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 yeah. Andrew, give me plug some strings on a guitar for me. Come on, somebody. This is all how God said he want to be worshipped. If there's an instrument, if we got a flute, a harp, a lure, or whatever it is, and listen, you say, well, I can't play an instrument. God has given you 10 stringed instruments right here. If you can cop them, that's your instrument. You got a voice to praise him. And listen, listen, number five, praise confuses the enemy. Ask, what's his name? King Jehoshaphat. It confuses. As Gideon's army, it'll confuse the enemy. Come on, somebody. Praise open prison doors and breaks the shackles. Ask those men that was in prison, Paul and Silas. Praise God. will shake your prison. will shake the bondages off of you. I know what I'm talking about. Number seven, praise is a garment that dispels the spirit of depression and heaviness. Praise is a garment you put on and you never ever take it off again. It's not like you get home and you take off your clothing. This one you just keep on and you sleep with it. It's like the garments they wore back in the Old Testament when, when they came out of the river and they wore that thing for 40 years, man. And it, they never took their clothes off because it never wore out. Hey Amen. Are you ready to put a jacket of praise on? A garment of praise? A cloak of praise? Well, I don't know if it'll match my outfit. Are you kidding me? That, that praise garment matches anything, man matches anything it's more beautiful it makes you more beautiful you you shine so much better with the praise on your lips haven't you noticed people with praise on their lips they just look more beautiful the men is more handsome than ever that's no there's not a more handsome man than a man that knows how to praise god i'm just telling you 
I'm letting you know. Young girls, don't you date a sour puss over there. Don't you go and date somebody who doesn't want to praise God. Find somebody that's hilarious in love with Jesus. That is not afraid to praise God. Boys, the girls are watching you. If you're not married, I'm giving them notice. Don't you touch a guy that can't praise God. Don't even date a man that can't praise God. Mm. And that goes for the girls. You want the guy to notice you? There's no more beauty than a woman that loves God. I mean, you can't be more beautiful. I, listen, I don't care what kind of makeup they will give you. When you put praise in your mouth, praise on your lips, praise in your heart, you're the most gorgeous looking thing walking down the aisle, walking down the mall. You got praise on you and you shine with the glory of God on your heart. It's attractive. People want to be around you. Haven't you noticed? If you're sour and mean and ugly, guess how many people want to be around you? Zero. Nobody. We're all running. But when you're beautiful on the inside with a praise garment, my goodness. Even the enemy backs off. He can't handle the beauty of God in you. So would you ready to lift your hands and praise the Lord? Are you ready to worship him with all that you got? Are you going to hold back? I, oh, well, what would others say? Well, how about what will God say? What would my heavenly father say if I praise him right now? Huh? Because we're so concerned about what so-and-so says and that brother and that sister and that aunt and that. They can't help you. They, uh, they love you, but they can't love you like Jesus does. There's a blessing with your name on it. Oh, hallelujah. Can we sing a praise? Can we worship the Lord? Y'all ready? Come on, come on. You got to look more ready for me. You got to kind of smile more ready for me. You, you got to put it on your heart, on your face. It just got to beam, beam, beam. Hallelujah. Beam, beam, beam. Didn't he say in Psalm, is it 60? Hey, shine, arise, and shine. So God commands us to shine. Woo. You're shining. Sorry, it's on you. You got to shine. Look at you looking good. With your praise on. So let's just stand before the Lord. Let's sing. Let's worship the Lord. Let's sing, Andrew. Let's bless the Lord. Come on, let's go. In Jesus' name. Huh? Oh, oh, get the unmute buttons going, guys. Where are y'all? Get the unmute buttons. Now somebody get up there. Get the unmute. Where's my electrical guys? At least get up there. Electrical guy. <laughs> She's been my... <laughs> my <laughs> I guess all the other guys are down there in the youth praising anyway. Amen. Hadn't it sometimes irritate you when, when you see people up here just dancing and free and worshiping? It's like, can't they just sit down? I mean, can't they just, they're in the house of the Lord. Right! <laughs> Are you ready to go? I'm pressed but not crushed. Persecuted, not abandoned. Hey! Struck down but not destroyed. Come on out here to praise the Lord I'm for a moment. I'm beyond the curse. Come on and practice. For his promise Exercise with endure. your moment. Come on, right joy is gonna be my strength. Hey. Though sorrow may last for the night, joy comes in the morning. Joy's coming. Yes, you know. Yeah, man, get up here. Yeah, get up here. Sing. Get up here. Help them. Help them sing. Help them sing.
first word, keep it going, keep it flowing, that's okay. He says Shabbat means to shout. Do you have a shout in the camp? One, two, three, shout! Barak, he says bow in his presence. Come on with your shout. Let's bow. Shout and bow. I can see change falling off as you dare to worship the Lord in this manner. Yes, Lord. Number three, he says, Toda. Toda, everybody. You know what that is? Extension of your hands. Shout. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Woo. Samar is to make music. You got hands, don't you? You got a mouth, don't you? You got feet, don't you? Come on. Yes, Lord. Tehillah is to sing with the Spirit of God. Now let's worship the Lord with all of the above. Yes, Lord.
with a voice of victory. Ah, you just got to excuse us just a minute. Excuse me while I praise. Excuse me while I shout. Yeah, I don't mind. I don't want to offend you. But I'm here to praise the Lord. Here to bless His name. If I tell you of all that He's done for me, where He brought me out, how He rescued me. Hey! <laughs> hey! Somebody ought to run in my office out here somewhere. There's a camera that's burnt. Did you see that in the packet? Go see it on our table. Tell, don't let me testify. Huh? Some of us been so quiet. You let the devil run all over you. Hallelujah. I pulled on some old pictures the other day. I was unpacking. I was trying to get over here and we had a yard sale. And I'm pulling out boxes and I'm finding pictures of how God has delivered, has brought us through 20, 30 years ago. How our van about to explode on us. Kids was going to burn alive. But God's hand was upon us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. Thank you, Lord. In a minute, some of you needs to get a little. Why don't y'all just come a little closer? Y'all too far out there. I want to show you this camera. This is a little evidence. You say, well, it's the old cat. Do you know what happened? Huh? We almost got burned alive in a van that blew up with gas in it on the side of the interstate. Okay. One o'clock in the morning, coming back from a revival. Van on fire. I jumped out to see what's going on and a blaze just blew me back. And all I could think of, oh my goodness, the kids are sleeping in the van. Brandon was a baby strapped in a car seat. I jerked the doors open of that, sli of that van. I just threw kids out. I mean, we just slung them out on the side of the road, on the grass. Wives are screaming, kids are screaming, don't know what's going on. In just a few minutes, our van, I wish I had pictures tonight. I'm going to show you those when the whole thing exploded. All our money, our green cards, everything we owned, our equipment, cameras, guitars, burned up in that thing. But our lives were spared. Our lives were spared. See, that was only stuff. But since we were not attached to our stuff, there was nothing anyway in God's hands. God gave us abundantly and over and above what we lost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when you see us worshiping and praising God, I can tell you of His goodness and what He's done for me. I can tell you when they told me, Johan McGregor, when a doctor poked me here, there, all over, and it said, I heard the word say to me, this looks like colon cancer. Do you know what that does to a young man? A 40, I just turned 40 years old. My whole world was ended. That devil said, you, you're going to die. It's over for you, buddy. I don't have to go into all the details. I'm standing here whole, healed, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. This year, in August, God's grace and mercy. I should have been dead so many times. I'm going to celebrate my 58th birthday. I only glory to God. Hallelujah. We could tell you some things. Amen. I just wanted to bring you a little proof. <laughs> and I said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, friend. If you want to see miracles in your life, I don't know how to stress this thing anymore. Learn to worship God. Get, 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 get that shame devil, devil, get that little intimidation off of you. Say, no, no, no. You're hindering me. You're just a hinder to me. You're holding me back from my breakthrough, from my blessing. Ah, ah, he's got you blocked, jaw, and you can't praise him like you shouldn't want to. I'm afraid I don't know how that's a lie from the hell that's a lie from the devil you open your mouth wide God said I'll fill it for you put a praise in your mouth 
I tell you, you're going to write back to me. You're going to come back and, tear and pull me aside and say, Preacher, here's what God has done for me. I was in a pit. I was in deep distress. But when I called upon the name of the Lord, when I praised Him and I worshipped Him, and I wasn't ashamed and I did it from my heart, He came and He delivered me. Can I tell you, if God did that for David, He must do it for you. He's a God that is no respecter of persons. What he'll do for David, what he did for Abraham, for Moses, what he did for all the disciples, he must do it for you. And he will. He says, I'm the God I change not. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And all that is within me bless his holy name bless the lord bless the lord oh my soul oh my soul and all his holy name sing he has done great things he has done great things he has done great things and he'll do them again he has he has done yes, he great has. Lift your voice and say, Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Come on, saints.